Now to a bittersweet story about the secret ingredient lurking in our food. We've always known that too much sugar is bad for us. And since we were kids, the sweet stuff has been strictly for treats. But it's no longer clear what's packed with sugar and what's not. Because many of the foods marketed as healthy are in fact chock full of sugar. And as Layla McKinnon discovered, there's a massive industry pulling every trick in the book to get you and I hooked on sugar. If there's one thing that defines the Burdekin in North Queensland, it's sugarcane. For nearly 150 years, these towering fields have dominated the landscape. This is the heart of sugar country. What goes into turning this crop into this one? Doesn't take a real lot. Lots of sunshine and water. And hard graft. And a bit of hard work. Vince Papali is a fourth generation cane farmer. As understated as he is proud. Sugar is in his blood. He's part of the crucial $2 billion industry. Sugar. Thank you. Here you go. Sugar at its finest. Cheers. Feeding our insatiable appetite for sweetness. Mm. Yum, that's delicious. It's quite refreshing, isn't it? Mm. Have you got any more where that came from? Absolutely, there's a bit there. <laughs> Just 700 acres? <laughs> 700 acres. <laughs> but all is not sweet with Vince's fields of green. His prized crop is the dietary villain of our time, regarded by many as the greatest health issue we face. Sugar has become so prevalent in today's society. Actor Damon Gamo has become an unlikely warrior in the global war against sugar. That if you removed all the items containing it from a standard supermarket's shelves, just 20% of items would remain. He's the star of That Sugar Film, a surprising one-man exploration of exactly what sugar is doing to us. And there was mixed messages about sugar at the time. The only way to find out some truth was to do an experiment. And you were the guinea pig? Yeah, I was the human lab rat. Yeah. <laughs> he was the perfect lab rat because for three years, Damon had cut all refined sugar from his diet. Then for the film, he went on a 60-day sugar-laden binge, consuming the equivalent of 40 teaspoons of sugar a day, nearly seven times the recommended intake. How difficult was it to reach 40 teaspoons? It was a piece of cake. <laughs> oh, that's very bad, I didn't mean Bumptish. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it was very easy, you know. Um, I mean, I had a, my standard breakfast was you know, like a healthy cereal, low-fat yoghurt and a glass of apple juice, and that was 20 teaspoons before 9 o'clock in the morning. That's a recommended serving size. The really alarming thing about Damon's experiment was that almost everything he ate is marketed as healthy. The catch for me was that I had no junk food. So I did all that without chocolate, ice cream, lollies or confectionery. The 40 teaspoons I ate had to be found in these perceived healthy foods that are, you know, many parents would give their kids thinking they're doing the right thing. I'd like to go to 1932, please. Done. Damon was monitored by a team of doctors and nutritionists as he plunged headlong into his new sugary world. And his health took a nosedive faster than he could believe. 79.3. He'd put on three kilos in less than a fortnight. Oh, baby. By day 18, blood tests revealed the first signs of fatty liver disease. The big change is that the liver function tests have had an amazing rise in one of the enzyme levels. And this is really the first time I've actually seen that it can be actually developed in two or three weeks. <laughs> right. I remember being in the blood clinic and I rang the producer of the film and he said, oh, how'd you go, mate? And I said, well, I've just got my results. I've got fatty liver disease. And he said, yes, that's great. <laughs> now we've got a movie. What's most startling is that Damon's sugar odyssey 
is not as extreme as you might think. So this is how much sugar you're going for a day? Yeah. I don't do this most days, I can tell you. I don't stand here and pour sugar into <laughs> a bowl. You? No. Hang on, I might lose count. That's 12. The average Australian consumes between 30 to 40 teaspoons of sugar every day. A far cry from the World Health Organization's recommended daily intake of just six teaspoons. Yeah, that's 40. That's what most people are having every day. Are people shocked to learn that they are eating that much? I mean, oh, I was shocked, but yeah, of course they are. You know, when it's hidden in the foods, you don't realise it, but when it's, you see it like this, yeah, I mean, it's no wonder that we're getting fatter and sicker when we're having this amount of sugar every day. In sensory labs like this one, run by marketing company Colmar Brunton, the products of tomorrow are engineered to precision. Three, six, three, eight. Today on the menu, humble tomato soup. Through the hatches, a team of human guinea pigs help shape the foods we'll crave, carefully analysing and scoring every element of flavour, smell and texture. Finding the precise formulation can be the difference between a product's success or failure. How deliberate is this sugar push from the food industry? They're trying to make money and sell as many products as they can and they will find any trick they can to get us to like their foods. So, you know, this is what we're up against. It's a, it's a mighty machine. With these tests, food scientists are searching for a kind of magic formula. They call it the bliss point. It's the perfect combination of sugar, fats and salt. And if they can get that right, they know we'll keep coming back for more. The bliss point is really just a, a newish term for a very old concept. There will be a point, with respect to, say, sweetness, at which it is ideal, at which our pleasure is maximal. And what happens when companies get the bliss point right? When they get it right, the product typically takes off. Dr Robert McBride is a food scientist and sensory psychologist. Should we be giving up sugar? No, absolutely not. Why not? It's one of the pleasures of life. We need these pleasures. He's an expert in what drives us to eat what we eat. How much effort goes into creating a product that we'll love? A tremendous amount of effort. As if they're a big company and they're a multinational and they want to go worldwide with a product, it's just the sky's the limit in what they will spend. They have to get it right. I would say that the majority of people have absolutely no idea that they are eating four, five, sometimes ten times the amount of sugar that our bodies are designed to handle. Former magazine editor Sarah Wilson has built her own empire. Just on your right. Riding the anti-sugar wave. It's gone from a fringe kind of concept to something that is actually being taken seriously. Okay. Four years ago, Sarah started a blog, I Quit Sugar. What began as a personal experiment in sugar-free living has spawned a $4 million business spanning the globe. Big Food, she says, is starting to heed the message. Food manufacturers are designing foods that we want. Um, isn't it up to us to choose which ones are good for us and, and how much sugar we eat? Yes, I think it is up to us and I think that that's essentially what people are doing now is that they're choosing to eat less sugar and they're wanting to see products with alternative sweeteners and less sweetener. Um, we're seeing a lot of the big companies move in this direction and I think that's going to start to happen more and more. <laughs> After 60 days, Damon's sugar adventure was at an end. Hi, darling. Mine too. Look at that. By then, he had downed 2,360 not so loving spoonfuls. He'd piled on eight kilos, 10 centimetres of visceral fat around his waist, and according to his doctors, was on the path to obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. I don't regret doing it, but knowing what I know now, I'd never do it again. How's your health now? I'm back. I'm totally fine. Everything's internally is all healthy again. I've lost all the weight now and, yeah, I'm just enjoying. I much prefer eating the way I do. These days, Damon is still consumed by sugar, but it's now a sweeter experience. OK, the juice. One, 
two, three, Stop. three in the juice. He's spreading a sugar mantra that moderation is the key. 11, 12, oh 13. Oh, that's quite a lot. And that's a message with which sugar farmer Vince Papali can certainly agree. How do you feel when people talk about sugar as though it's hurting us? It hurts. It really hurts. It's not the product's fault. I've no doubt that if you eat too much sugar, it will make you sick. So don't eat too much. Ordinary people are watching at home. Hmm. Uh, you know, are you just some nutty hipster <laughs> who wanted to make a movie? Or <laughs> how can you convince people that your yeah, message is sure. for them? That's the point of our film. Let's not demonise it and say it's evil. We're not saying that at all. People need to trust their own body and listen to what they need, try what works for them and then go for it. Don't listen to any health guru or anyone. Just um, do what works for you. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.